Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 23rd, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. And now, my friends, child rapists are being released. An incredible story. Uh, again, a Superior Court judge has now decided, well, along with two other psychiatrists, to release a notorious child rapist convicted of con uh, uh, raping two children in Lawrence. He is now going to be walking the streets either today or tomorrow. We're going to be discussing that later this hour. This is why we need to rein in the out-of-control liberal judges. As you know, my friends, tomorrow we're going to be holding a major rally at 4.15 p.m. It is going to be in front of the J. Michael Ruane Judicial Building on Federal Street in Salem. It's there to impeach Judge Feely. I have a column up. I am urging all of you, please read it. It is called Feely Laughs at Victims is Families. And I lay out the story of Lucy Kohler, who is going to be on the air tomorrow. You can hear it straight from her. She will tell you the story about how Feely and his female staff members of his were openly mocking her, taunting her, making fun of her that she stood at the courthouse to protest his latest decision, releasing a notorious heroin dealer as she held the picture of her dead son, Kyle, who died of a fentanyl overdose last year. She was openly mocked on uh, right there in front of the courthouse and the female staffer winking, saying, good luck with that rally tomorrow. And a person who will be there with us speaking, a man who is now driving legislation in the State House to get Judge Feely impeached and really to try to rein in these out of control, arrogant liberal judges is none other than State Representative Jim Lyons. Jim, thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report. Jeff, thank you so much for having me. And uh, that story you just told is an absolute outrage. Uh, the behavior of those folks at the Salem uh, Superior Court. Uh, but the most outrageous thing that's happened is the fact that Judge Feely has now written into the statute that heroin dealers can be released to the street to sell their poison that is killing our family members simply if they need to get money for their own family. I have never heard anything like that in my life. When I listened to his courtroom uh Speaking the other day, I could not believe it that, it that a judge in the midst of an opiate epidemic is saying that he sees the difference between an addict and someone that peddles the poison. Well, the addict needs our help. The ones that peddle our poison ought to be thrown behind bars. And this judge is, uh, is the absolute reason that the legislature hasn't within our authority the right to bring an impeachment procedure against judges who are out of control and that's why we filed this resolution and we're gaining support in the legislature as you know we just filed it last week and many of the legislators are just getting to hear about it this week so we're hoping to really uh increase the number of legislators on this uh, petition so that's number one and number two we also now know that non-citizens have more rights than citizens because this judge took into consideration the fact that this non-citizen potentially could be deported if he was put in prison. Another outrageous reason for this judge to let this thug heroin dealer out on the streets. So, Jeff, thank you so much for uh, promoting it. Over 5,000 people have already signed our petition. That's an incredible amount of people in a short period of time. So. Let's hope that we can really send a statement, not only to this judge, but for other judges who decide that they want to let criminals back out in the street.
We are talking with State Representative Jim Lyons, really one of the few good guys up on Beacon Hill. Uh, he is now co-sponsoring an important piece of legislation. I'm urging all of you, please sign the petition. The more signatures we get, the more pressure there will be to impeach Feely. He will also be speaking alongside me and Jeff Deal tomorrow uh, at the rally. Go to wrko.com slash Kuhner, K-U-H-N-E-R. It's about, I think, the fourth story from the top uh, it's there it says join us at the rally sign the petition please go and sign the petition jim i want to ask you many questions but let me ask you the obvious one how does such an egomaniac a power hungry corrupt arrogant radical leftist egomaniac like judge feely how does he get away with one outrageous ruling after another cop killers child rapists, drug dealers, you name it, he's letting them out on the streets. How does a man like him survive on the bench? The, re the reason is, is because the legislature is democratically controlled, and right now they don't want to take action on this. Uh, right now we we only have two Democrats that have signed on to the, to the resolution, and the Democrats do not want to hold accountable their radical judges. And until we get that and we get an outrage from the public over this, they're going to continue to do this. But this is the first step, uh, Jeff. This is a very important uh, piece of uh, legislation, and it's something that we're just not going to roll out there and let it disappear. We're going to continue this fight all the way through to bring attention to what is happening. Take a look at that, that young uh, officer that was uh, basically assassinated down, in, in the, down on the Cape, uh, uh, Sean Gannon by a, an individual who had 125 charges against him. What was that monster doing out on the street? So this is a pattern among many of our judges, and the reason is because they're appointed for life, and the legislature does not hold them accountable. Our job is to hold them accountable and to make sure that people are aware of exactly what's happening. It's important that we expose everything that this judge has been involved in and let everyone know that this has to stop. Judges must enforce the law and put people behind bars and keep them there. Uh, Jim, we've got about three minutes left. I want to ask you an obvious question. Where is Governor Charlie Baker on this? His silence is deafening. Why will he not expose and condemn Judge Feely? So first of all, as you know, Deval Patrick... Um, put Judge Feely on the, on the bench. And I think um, Governor Baker's position on this is that the legislature has a responsibility to act, and we are going to act, and I believe that if we act, the governor will definitely join, uh, join us. So I, I think that's where it is right now. This, just remember, this just happened last Thursday. Uh, we, are, uh, we are gaining momentum in the legislature, and I believe that... Uh, Governor Baker uh, stands with us as far as putting uh, these heroin dealers behind bars. So I think this thing is going to build its its own momentum, and I think the governor will be uh, will be right there with us. Jim, I mean, in theory, this is supposed to be a bipartisan issue. Uh, it's about our children. It's about our grandchildren. It's about our own communities and our state. Uh, are any Democrats joining your your drive? Is anybody Democrats signing that that piece of legislation you have in the uh, in the state house? As of yesterday, uh, Representative Jim Dwyer from Woburn and Representative Colleen Jerry from Drake get both had signed on, uh, and we're hoping that this week and next week we continue to get Democrats to sign on, and, and we're going to make a, a real push in the next several days to uh, let people know exactly what we're trying to do and to encourage them to become part of the process. Clearly, uh, if we can get as many uh, Democrats as we uh, as possible, that would certainly give momentum to it. But what about the Speaker of the House? Where is the Speaker of the House on this? This is a legislative uh, process. Has anyone asked him what his position is? I mean, this is a legislative-led petition, and where is the Speaker of the House? The silence from the Democratic leadership on this issue is deafening. So I think it's important for people out there in, in your audience to call their Democratic colleagues, their Democratic legislators, and ask them why. Why are they silent on this? Why they don't want to hold the, uh, you know, this judge accountable? And uh, I think that's where the focus has to go 
initially is on the legislature and the leadership in the House of Representatives. Where is Speaker Thaleo? Where is his silence? Why is he silent? Uh, Why Jim, you have to keep this going. Jim, we've got one minute left. I want to ask you very quickly. It's in my column, uh, published last night. Feely is laughing at the victims' his families. What do you make of Lucy Kohler? I interviewed her. You're going to hear her on the air. She's going to be joining us at the rally. She's protesting the poor death of her son. She cannot believe that Feely, uh, Feely made that outrageous uh, ruling. She's standing in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse, doing nothing, bothering nobody. She's holding up a sign and a picture of her son. And a staff member, a female staff member from Feely's office walks up to her and literally Jim laughs in her face and mocks her and says, there's nothing you can do to judge Feely. Wink, wink. Good luck with your guys' rally on Thursday. Jim, is this guy sick and out of control? I, I think that that speaks volumes about the uh, the arrogant attitude of some of those in the judicial system. And that poor woman, to have someone like that speak to her in that manner is an absolute disgrace. So that will only give us more energy and more um, desire to try to bring this to a head and demand accountability. These heroin dealers are selling poison that are killing people. 83% now of the deaths of overdose victims in Massachusetts is directly related to fentanyl. And fentanyl is not being sold anywhere but by these drug traffickers. This guy was a known drug trafficker. And the, the prosecution wanted him in jail. The police wanted him in jail. And Judge Feely let him back out on the street. It's a disgrace. And as a legislator, we have a responsibility to hold them accountable, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, please, I urge everybody, Cooner Country, go to wrko.com slash Cooner. It is right there. Sign the petition to continue to support this bill that Representative Jim Lyons is co-sponsoring in the State House, demanding the impeachment of Judge Feely. Jim, I look forward to seeing you at tomorrow's rally, my friend. Jeff, thank you, and thank you for keeping this front and center. We need to make sure the public is aware of this, and we cannot let this die without making Judge Feely, without holding him accountable. Amen. Keep up the great fight, Jim. God bless you, buddy. Thank you, Jim. All right, take care. Okay, my friends, my column is up as well. I lay it all out. I am daring the media. I have Lucy Kohler on record. You're going to hear her story, by the way, on the air. They're laughing at her for and mocking her for her son dying of a fentanyl overdose. That's the kind of sick, twisted psychopath that Judge Feely and his people are. Where is the media? Where is Governor Baker? Where is Bob DeLeo? Where is Ed Markey? Where is Elizabeth Warren? Where is Maura Healy? Where is the entire state media? This is one of the biggest scandals of our time. And they're sitting around doing nothing. My friends, please sign the petition, read my column, pass it on to as many people as possible. I'm asking you to join me tomorrow for a rally to impeach Judge Feely. We can do this, my friends. It will be held at the J. Michael Ruane Judicial Building. That's where Feely works. It's going to be at 415 on Federal Street in Salem. You can also, if you want, take public transportation, take the train. It's, it's very easy. It's the Salem stop. It's about a three, five minute walking distance to the rally on the commuter rail, the Rockport, Newburyport line, Cooner country. It's time for us to rise again. Twelve twenty four here on the great WRKO. Okay. My friends, tomorrow is the day. Rally at 4.15 p.m. It's going to be in front of the J. Michael Ruane building demanding the impeachment of Judge Timothy Feely. I have a column up. I'm exposing him and his people. I need your help, Cooner Country. Go to WRKO.com slash Cooner. His female staff members, I talked about it on yesterday's show, 
openly laughing, taunting, and mocking Lucy Kohler, who was there protesting Feely's latest decision to let loose a heroin dealer. She was holding up a picture of her dead 29-year-old son, Kyle, who died of a fentanyl overdose. They literally laughed in her face. This judge needs to go. And the reason why, I'm telling you, there is a complicity of silence between the political and media class is because there are other out-of-control judges in this state. And I'm going to get to another story after the break, I promise. Now they've let loose a child rapist, a convicted child freaking rapist. So I've got that story. We need to take a stand. We need to start holding these judges accountable. 617-266-6868. Larry in Belmont. You're up next. Go ahead, Larry. Jeff, I had to rewind the TV the other night when I heard about this judge, and then I heard you talking about it the next day. Absolutely disgusted. But what I want to ask is, I haven't heard anyone bring this up, and I want clarification if I can. Did he surpass or circumvent a mandatory minimum and weren't these mandatory minimums put in place to keep judges like this from doing this stuff yes okay so why isn't the like the supreme judiciary interested in this what honestly larry because this is a mafia state uh, yeah. No, uh, Larry, I'm being honest with you. It's a, it's oh, a no, corrupt. No, it's a corrupt mafia state, and this judge is a hack. Jim Lyon, he was appointed by Deval Patrick. They didn't appoint oh, yeah. him, Larry. They didn't appoint him because he's a a learned guy in the law, who's got wisdom and experience that's going to impartially enforce the law. He's one of their radical left wing hacks. And this guy, Larry, I'm telling you, I got to be careful because I got sources now who are talking to me about this judge. He is walking around bragging and boasting, saying, you're lucky if 50 people come out. We own this state. He's telling people in private, you can't touch me. I can do whatever I want. Now, Larry, I'm going to say it. I've hinted at it. Now I'm going to say it. I want to know if this judge is on the take. I honest to God want to know if this judge is on the take because I'm looking at his record now. And I'm seeing ridiculous bail hearings where he's dropping them from 750,000. I'm talking about people who are child molesters, child rapists to seven thousand five hundred five thousand dollars. They come up with the cash and boom, he's they're out they're on out. the street. Well, Jeff, Th- there's something 5, wrong with this judge. This people. judge is a menace. Jeff, five thousand and fifty people. I'll be one of the attendees tomorrow. I'm making it my mission to get there. I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you guys on this. This is ridiculous. He has to go. Larry, amen. Thank you so much for that call. I will see you tomorrow. God bless you, Larry. Thank you. 617-266-6868. To me, it's obvious. I mean, this judge is screaming corruption. Now, look, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Look, I know there's corruption in this state. I'm not talking the freaking probation department. You know, I'm not talking about the uh, uh, Charlie Baker loading up the parks department with his hacks you know, uh, to play Smokey the Bear, okay? This guy has the power of life and death over us. And they have become so full of hubris. They have become so power hungry, so megalomania, megalomania, a megalomaniac. They have become so drunk with power that they think they can do whatever they want. They laugh. Child rapists are being put back out on the street. This guy was warned about a child molester. I'm talking about Feely now. And with a home improvement business, and he's around children all the time, let him out on the street. He let loose a person with multiple serious gun charges. They told him he's a threat to people, society, and public safety. He let John Williams out on the street. 30 days later, he gunned down Corporal Eugene Cole in Maine, stole his car, and then robbed the store. He literally has blood on his hands. Here, don't even take my word for it. Speak to the captain of the Salem Police Department. Okay, Prosnowski, hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, Prosnowski, forgive me, it's a Polish last name. He says, this guy, we know, 
is responsible for countless deaths and overdoses in our community. The captain's saying it. This guy, he's not just some little little drug dealer, a family man who's trying to provide for his family. This is a guy who's responsible. We don't know for how many deaths in our community. Our officers put their lives on the line to set up a sting operation to get this guy. They nab him with 40 bags of heroin. Feely, boom. You're, he even tells him to his face. He says it at the hearing. You're from the Dominican Republic. You're on a green card. You got to be careful. Don't get arrested with the heroin on you. I'll have to deport you. This guy is a clear and present danger. This guy is engaged in blatant judicial corruption and misconduct. This case screams for impeachment. 617-266-6868 is the number. Okay, my friends. The House is set to vote on the so-called red flag gun bill today. We're going to discuss it in the next hour, I promise. Angela Anderson is in the WRKO newsroom with those details. Take it away, Angela. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Okay, my friends, <clears throat> buckle up your seatbelts. Listen now to this one. Uh, it, it, it ends when we say it ends. So listen now to this story. A serial child rapist is now going to be released either today or tomorrow at the absolute latest because, again, of our out-of-control, corrupt, liberal judiciary. Listen now to this story. Wayne S. Chapman was convicted in three states. He was convicted in Massachusetts for raping two 10-year-old boys in Lawrence in the 1970s, the late 1970s. He was originally given, I can't believe this, 15 years for each rape, for, for each child that he raped. 15 years. 15 for boy one, 15 for boy two. That's 30 years. He served his 30 years. However, as uh, prosecutors have now been adamantly insisting, he refused to get into any kind of a sexual treatment program, any kind of a sex offender treatment program. He refused to get any help. In fact, he thinks there's nothing wrong with him. He thinks that molesting and raping young boys is actually a good thing. He's been bragging about it. So what happened was when he served his 30 years, uh, he was sentenced in 1977. He then was committed civilly as a sexually dangerous person. So he was civilly committed. For years, he has been petitioning the Superior Court to the Suffolk Superior Court, forgive me, for to be released unsuccessfully until now. And the reason why he is being released is because a judge allowed testimony in Suffolk Superior Court, another Moonbat judge, wasn't feely, but, you know, birds of a feather flock together, from two liberal psychologists, Greg Bell and Katrin Roos Weir, who now claim, because he's in his elderly years, he is no longer, quote-unquote, sexually dangerous. And so because according to these two moonbat psychiatrists who now claim he's no longer sexually dangerous, now the judge says, well, it's game over. We can hold him because it's been a civil commitment and he completed his criminal sentence a long time ago. So now they're going to release him either today or tomorrow. But if there's even more to this story. So this woman now is going to be laughed in her face as well. I'm telling you, it's coming. Billy Sham, she is the aunt of her nephew, uh, Andy, hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, Puglusi, Angelo, known as Andy, Puglusi. He was a young boy, her nephew, who vanished from a public swimming pool in Lawrence. The Lawrence police are convinced. They say, I'm telling you, Sh Chapman 
kill that boy. He raped that boy, and then he killed that boy. He's been hinting at it in prison, but he's never confessed to it. He's guilty as sin. Billy Sham, the nephew's aunt, who just simply wants justice, says, how can they release this serial child rapist back into the public? And she is now asking, in fact, begging for justice. And she's asking the judge... She's asking the two psychologists who testified on Chapman's behalf, saying, would you want him as your neighbor? Would you want him on your street? Would you want him around your children? A psychiatrist who did testify years ago when he was civilly committed, saying that this guy poses such a clear and present danger to children everywhere, to uh, young people everywhere, to public safety, to uh, just basic decency everywhere, said this guy should never see the light of day. Here is now what psychologist Michael Henry said in 2009. Listen to this. He goes, I interviewed him. I interviewed him extensively. Clearly, he doesn't feel like he needs any treatment. In fact, there is no indication that he's truly interested in changing who he is as a sex offender. He thinks it's fine to molest and rape children. What's the problem? I'm a pedophile. Children are sexual. They want to have sex. I'll give them sex. There are few ideas about what he might do in plain English. You release this guy, you have no idea what this guy's going to do. You have no idea. And to show you how natural molesting children, pedophilia, child pornography is to this guy. In New York State, before he was arrested for raping those two poor boys in Lawrence, police pulled him over. They found photos of naked children, young boys and girls, on his dashboard. According to the police officers, the way he had those pictures laid out, the way he was holding them and looking at them, it would be the way I would say if Ashton or Ava were playing soccer. You know, you take pictures of your kids playing soccer or baseball or football, and you're like, oh, look at my Ashton. Oh, look at my Ava. That's how titillated he was by pictures of naked children. Now, two points. And then I want to throw it open to you. Number one, I don't care if he was civilly committed or not. To me, that he's not spending the rest of his life behind bars is an outrage. And I'll tell you why it's an outrage. Because those boys that he raped, and we don't know their names, obviously, because they were minors and we shouldn't know their names. Their lives have been ruined forever. When you rape a child, you destroy the innocence of that child. That child will never psychologically, physically, emotionally ever recover again. His life has been unaltered irreparably. That alone demands that he spend the rest of his life in jail. But more than that, he murdered that other boy. Dollars to donuts, he murdered that other boy. And everybody knows he murdered that young boy. He raped that boy, and then he murdered that boy. And we're letting him out on the streets? First of all, I don't care whether they say he's impotent or he's too old. Or a guy like him can molest children in a thousand ways. It turns him on in his mind. Forget his body. I don't care how old this guy is. And number two, so I don't believe he's changed. He hasn't. Number two, what about that poor nephew? That poor boy, Andy Puglusi. What about his parents? What about the aunt? What about his brothers and sisters? How do you think they feel? This animal, who most likely raped and murdered and killed their boy, took them away from him, from all of them, is now allowed to walk the streets? That's why I'm holding the rally tomorrow. 
And I'm telling all of you, these stories will continue and they will never stop until we say it stops. This ends when you say it ends. WRKO. 1251 here on the great WRKO. Okay, coming up at 105. Boston's radio legend, Dan Ray, will be joining me to talk about Judge Feely and the rally tomorrow and what needs to be done. Also, the red flag gun confiscation bill. It's now going to be held for a vote in the state legislature. We're going to have that. The NFL stunning decision. It just broke a few minutes ago. They are now banning kneeling. Will you go back to the NFL? We'll discuss all of that. But first, now a child rapist, a serial convicted child rapist, is being let loose on our streets again. What needs to be done? 617-266-6868. Lines are loaded. Eddie in Quincy. You're up next. Go ahead, Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Did we lose Eddie? Okay, Junior in Linfield, you're up next. Go ahead, Junior. Yeah, Jeff, I'm a first-time caller. Welcome, Junior. I think it's great, you know, what you're doing and trying to impeach this judge. But it's the tip of the problem with drugs. The drug problem isn't going to stop until we put life in jail for all these drug dealers that sell them in $5 bags. They're the heart and soul of the business. Years ago... When we had the number business, the state took over. And there was hundreds of agents like myself that got 25%. And we had to quit a witch face jail time. Right now, you're not going to get the big dealers. They're too sharp. You're not going to stop them. But once you take away that agent, the mule, it ends overnight. Now, when the new governor sets the law, we need to detox hundreds of addicts, and there's not enough rehabs. So we send them to the local church or the high school auditorium, and we detox them in 30 days off of methadone or suboxone. And we'll also have speakers coming in every hour to, to share their story with the addicts. And what's the best way to say it? I'm getting a little nervous, uh, Junior, don't worry. you're among friends. You and I are having a conversation on the phone. Thank you, uh, Thank Junior. You. What's your base? What's, yeah, just don't swear, Junior. That's the only thing. Uh, yeah, I won't swear. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke. Uh, no, Junior. Look, I get what you're saying. You got to cut off the supply. You got to go after the dealers. You got to get the junk off the streets. And we've got to start showing real compassion to these addicts. Have them get rehabilitated. Yeah. Get them the help that they need. What this oh, judge yeah. did, Junior, is the exact opposite. Jeff. He was punishing the addict, saying, well, you're not doing it, so if you're not doing it, it's no big deal. You're just dealing it. I'm thinking, that's worse. Jeff, Jeff let me finish, because yes. i really got to get it all out. I went to two senators and told them what I wanted to do. One of the senators said, you need 65,000 uh, 65, votes to get on the referendum. I said, I'll get that. I'm going to put it on the computer. And I'll advertise it off one of my billboards, Life in Jail, uh, No Bail, and then my website. I, w I went to a fundraiser and handed a letter to the governor. I have got nowhere. You know, serial killers look like, they, they look like Snow Whites next to a heroin dealer. Amen. You know? Amen. Yeah. Junior, very well said. And thank you for that call. Look, where is Governor Baker? I'm telling you right now, that heroin dealer that Feely released is responsible for the deaths of at least dozens of people. He's a serial murderer. That's what he is. He peddles poison. He's a merchant of death. So to me, look, this should, this, in theory, it shouldn't be liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican. You got a guy that's killing children on the streets day after day. And this judge lionizes him in the courtroom. It's on, it's a, you're, you're a great family man. You're an entrepreneur. You're just making money for your family. Come on now. Go out there. Be careful. 
And I'm thinking, oh, my God, are you serious? The Democrats will say nothing. The media will say nothing. The governor doesn't give a damn. And this is the point I'm going to make with Dan Ray when he comes up at 105. I never want to hear Baker or anybody else in this state, whether it's Elizabeth Warren or Markey or anybody, talk to me about the opiate drug epidemic. If you're not going to move on Judge Feely, you have no credibility. Zero. That's why we're doing the rally tomorrow. We do a big rally. A lot of people show up. They're going to be forced to cover this issue. I want Feely to go. And then the liberal judges are going to know there are consequences to their outrageous rulings. Then we're going to finally put them on notice. You're not above the law. Andy in Nebraska, you're up next. Go ahead, Andy. Don't begin, Jeff. Andy! Andy! If there's any way that I can help either with this or with Judge Feely or the judge who let the child rapist go free, please, please, please let me know. Please let me know because that issue hits very, very close to home with me and cut me off if I do get too angry. Cause, and, you know, I, I can all, Jeff, call me crazy, but if someone were to kill the pedophile, that the one who killed the pedophile would face jail time, but... Face jail time, but the pedophile would get the pedophile gets to go free despite the fact he murdered and raped two children. I guarantee you want to how much you want to bet on that. You're completely right, Andy. I'm telling Andy, I wouldn't want to bet because I'd lose. (laughs) (laughs) Andy, you're you're a thousand percent correct. Thank you for that call. I really appreciate it. Joe, you're up next. Joe and Weston, thanks for holding and welcome. Jeff, God bless you. You're the best. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Listen, as the, as the father of five children that are the most precious thing in this earth, I, there is nothing, nothing more innocent in, on this earth than children. And so as it applies to that, if, if the only way he should be let out is if he's castrated. Otherwise, this guy should be in there forever and a day. And I'll tell you, I hate to say this, but it's eventually, if this doesn't correct itself, it's going to get to the point where you're going to end up with vigilantes. You're going to have people, if the courts are not going to resolve this and the authorities are not going to take care of this, inevitably, society is going to take care of it. And it's a, it's a shame that that's eventually where it's going to end up going to, but that's where it's going to end up going to. Joe, I've got about 40 seconds left, and I want to ask you this. I am a father. You're a father. If your child had been sexually raped by this man, raped and molested he'd be repeatedly. He'd be dead. He'd be and he's dead. walking out on the streets. Uh, Joe, I'm with you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a tough guy. I mean, I'm not claiming to be a tough guy, but I'm just telling you, I know what that would do to my child and to me. And yeah, I be, and I say, this is such, it's a travesty of justice. It's wrong. It's just wrong. I'm going to try to get out there with you tomorrow. I'm going to try like heck, but believe me, Jeff, there's a lot more of us out there than you can imagine. God Thank bless you. you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe, and God bless you. I really appreciate it. Okay, my friends. Dan Ray, yes, the living legend himself is going to be on. I have never seen Dan this fired up. Have you, Brittany? No, I haven't. I mean, he's yeah, he's smoking hot on this one. We're going to have him on, and then they're going for the guns. Gun confiscation through the back door. Huge piece of legislation now going to be sent in front of the state house. We'll discuss that. But first, Trump is now angry about Spygate. I don't blame him. Angela Anderson is in the WRKO newsroom. She has all the latest details. What are they, Angela?